Hello, so in this video we're going to take a look at some circuitry laws. So we're going to start off with looking at some of the resistor rules, looking at how you combine resistors in series and parallel, and then in the second half looking at the different current and voltage laws that apply to circuitry as well. So let's start off with the simplest one, uh, resistors in series. So you can tell two resistors are in series if you look between the two resistors you should see there are no splits or junctions in your circuit. So if you say you saw this one split into two resistors, that would tell you they're not in series with each other. But you can see there are no splits here, so they are in series with each other. So the general rule is to get the total resistance of two or more resistors in series, you just add their resistances together. So this is the general form of the equation for n resistors in series. So for this one, we've got a 2 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, so that's going to give us an overall resistance of 5 ohms. So what we've effectively done is we've turned that circuit into this circuit here. So we've simplified the circuit, and that's what we're always aiming to do with resistor laws, turn stuff into simple circuits like this. Okay, so that's the series law. So what's actually going on in terms of this? So... Um, Imagine you are, um, you are this coulomb here, and uh, being a human, you're attracted to these delicious donuts at the end. That's your incentive to go along that way, so that's like your potential difference. It's what's motivating you to go through this particular wire or component. But in your path, there are these muggers here and here, and we can see we've got a smaller mugger for the 1 ohm resistor and a larger mugger for the 2 ohm resistor there. So. A smaller mugger is going to be able to demand a smaller amount of money from you because he's not as intimidating, not as scary, and if he's demanding a smaller amount of money, it's not going to take as long to pay him, so he's going to slow you down by a smaller amount, and he's going to take a smaller amount of money. So a smaller resistor has, will decrease your current by a small amount, and it will only take a small amount of energy from you, the charges in your circuit. This bigger mugger is much more intimidating and he will take much more money from you and paying him that money will take a lot longer. It takes more money to count out for your money. So a larger resistor will take more energy if it's in series and it will also reduce the current or the rate of flow of charge by a bigger amount. So the bigger the resistance will be, the smaller the current is going to end up being there. So that's kind of how it works. So in terms of this, so you've got your charge, it's coming along, coming to the donuts, meets the small mugger, loses some energy, meets the bigger mug mugger, loses more energy, and it's got no energy left, so it needs to eat all these delicious donuts again, so it's got some energy to go. That's the idea with series resistors. Okay, so that's series. So if we look at them instead in parallel, so um, for parallel there's what's called a reciprocal rule. So 1 over the total resistance is equal to the sum of 1 over each of the other resistors in parallel. So here we've got two resistors in parallel, a 20 ohm and a 10 ohm. So what we do is we add 1 over 20 to 1 over 10, and you get 3 over 20 there, and we flip that over and that will tell us what the overall resistance of this whole circuit is, so it looks like this. And a quick check to make sure you've done this correctly, you should end up with a value that's smaller than all of the resistors you've got in parallel. So the smallest we've got, one we've got here is 10, so we should end up with a number smaller than that if we connect stuff in parallel. Because what we've done is we've opened up more pathways for the current to flow in, and if there's more pathways, the current's going to be bigger, so the overall resistance will be smaller. That's how I think about it. Okay, so that's resistors in parallel then. Um, so, in terms of visualising this, I try to think of uh, resistors in parallel in a slightly different way. So, if we have a circuit like this, I would redraw it like this. And what this can show you is, effectively, these two are in completely separate circuits. They have the same EMF source, but for all intents and purposes, they're in separate circuits to each other. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at here. So, if we go on to the next one. Cool. Um, what we can see here is if we've got two separate circuits, this is the current if we just had one 4 ohm resistor. So if we connect another one in parallel, we can see we can have twice, as, twice the rate of flow of charge or twice the current. So actually, 
adding another resistor identical in parallel will essentially act to double the current, which means overall your resistance has halved. If instead of connecting a 4 ohm, an identical one, we connect a 2 ohm one instead, a 2 ohm will allow double the current through, so we can see twice as much current as this one here. So when we've gone for this one on its own, to these two together, we can see we've actually multiplied the current by 3, or overall divided the resistance by 3. So again, that's what that means in terms of how you visualise it. Um, so in terms of uh, putting those two things together, which is something you'll usually come across, you won't get ones as straightforward as that. What we can see here is we've got a circuit with some series resistors and some in parallel. So the first thing we do is deal with any series resistors that we've got. So that's the first stage. So we can see that these two here are in series with each other because there is no splits or anything between them. So we combine those two, get to a 20 overall there. So that's what you can see there. These, this other one, if you try and go to these other resistors, you can see you've gone through a junction or a split. Therefore, they're not in series with each other. So we can't combine those yet. So we've dealt with all the series. And then what we've got is three resistors in parallel. So that what we're going to do is flip those all over. So that's what we've got here. Add them together, flip them back, and that gives us the overall resistance in our circuit, 5 ohms there. So that's your resistors using both the series and the parallel resistor rule. And as I was saying before, what that gives us is a simple equation, like, or sorry, a simple diagram like this. And then if we wanted to calculate, say, the current from the battery, that's now really easy to do. We know what the EMF is, we know what the resistance is, bam! there's the current, nice and straightforward. So these rules are a very effective way of working out what the potential difference or a current is from your power source there. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to look at the current and voltage laws that apply to your circuit. So let's start off with the current law. So what the current law says, this is Kirchhoff's current law, is that at any point in your circuit, the total current going into that point must be equal to the total current coming out of that point. Now, if we just pick a point here, that's fairly intuitive, because we're going to see anything coming in here must keep going. The most interesting places to look at are these junctions here. So we can see going in, we've got this current, and coming out, we've got these two. So what that tells us is I1 and I2 here must add together to give you the current coming from your cell, which is quite useful. So if we knew these two, we could easily work out what that one is. And this is an actually an application of the law of conservation of charge. So you'll probably come across in the, this in the particle physics part of the course, that charge must always be conserved. And this is another application of that, in this case, to circuitry. Okay, so that's the current law. Um, so then we've got the parallel voltage law. So there are two voltage laws, so I separate them out into parallel and series. So the parallel voltage law says that potential difference across components in parallel is the same. So we've got two resistors here that we can see are in parallel with each other, so they must have the same potential difference across them. So this one here, must, if that's 6 volts, this one here must also be 6 volts. And this is a, an application of the law of conservation of energy. So we know the charges coming out of here all have a certain amount of energy. So if this is 6 volts, each coulomb has six joules of energy coming out here and it, to this point it hasn't gone through any resistors at all so it hasn't lost any energy so they have six joules here they have six joules here at this point in the circuit they're about to come to the other terminal of your battery so you know you've got no energy or zero joules so if we trace that back they must have zero joules here and zero joules there so therefore the energy change across both of them must be the same Therefore, the potential difference across them must be the same. That's how that ends up working there. And that's the parallel voltage law. And then if we look at the series voltage law, what that says is the sum of EMFs around a loop is equal to the sum of the potential differences. So I've got a parallel circuit, but a loop would just be one section of it. So that would be a loop there. Another loop would be around there as well. So your loop would need to contain a power source and in this case some resistors there. But it must contain a power source otherwise this law doesn't make sense. Um, so 
What we can see here is around this loop, we've got six volts of EMF from your cell. Therefore, there must be six volts of potential difference there for this law to be applied. And again, this is the same law of conservation of energy here. We put six joules per coulomb into the uh, charges here. So we must take six joules per coulomb out of it here, which is why you get six volts there. Okay, so those are your three current and voltage laws there. So let's apply those to a circuit. So we've got a circuit here with two 20 ohm resistors in series and a 20 ohm resistor in uh, parallel. Uh, just a quick thing to flag up. Um, here, you might be thinking, well, hang on, he said earlier that if they're in series, there can't be any junctions. So like voltmeters or ammeters, you should consider not really being a part of your circuit. So um, just imagine, pretend that they're not there for the purposes of determining that, but it's a thing to watch out for. So what we're going to do is calculate what the voltmeter reading is. So if we apply Kirchhoff's parallel voltage law, we know the potential difference across here must be the same as the potential difference across here. So that includes both of those two, because that section of your circuit is in parallel with that section of your circuit. And then if we look around this loop here, we know the potential difference across this 20 ohm one must be 6 volts, because in a loop, they have to add together. The potential differences have to add together for EMF. So the potential difference here must be 6, so the potential difference here must also be 6. We also know these two resistors are in series with each other, which means the current going through them is the same. So let's put those two things together. Um, and if we have the same, uh, so we've got a six volts across here, and we know the current going through them is the same. So using Ohm's law, if they have the same resistance, which they do, and the same current, which they do, they must have the same potential difference. So the voltmeter reading here and here must be the same. Therefore, each of them has to be three volts because it's equally shared between the two. And in terms of dealing with them, if they're not um, equal resistors, that's where your potential divider laws, which we'll look at in a later video, come into play there. Okay, so that the voltmeter reading would be three volts. So what we're going to look at next is actually working out what the current through each of these two loops is, so we can work out what the current passing through our cell is. So um, if we want to know the current through this section, we can use Ohm's law here. So the current will be the total potential difference divided by the total resistance. So that's what you can see happening here, which gives you a value of 0.15 amps. We could also have done it, we know this is 3 volts and that's 20, and then again we'd have got 0.15 amps, so you could have done it that way as well. Same strategy here, we know the potential difference is 6 volts, the resistance is 20, giving us a total current of 0.3 amps. Just a little check here. Notice the resistance here is half the resistance there. Uh, notice the current at the bottom is double that. So we can see that that's working out there. And then putting that together, uh, working the current through the cell, we know from Kirchhoff's current law, the current in here plus the current in here must equal the current coming through your cell. So we can get a value of 0.45 amps. As an alternative method to this, we could have used our resistor rules from earlier and Ohm's law to do the same thing. So let's have a look at that. So if we're using the resistor laws instead, what we can see from this that these two are in series with each other. So you might think, well, actually, no, hang on, there's a junction there. But the key thing is it's going to a voltmeter. So when we're using voltmeters and ammeters, in terms of the way the circuit behaves, we completely ignore them because voltmeters are considered to have infinite resistance. So no current will go around this way. So these two are in series with each other, and that whole section is in parallel with this one. So we've added the two series ones there, so you can see that there. And we've flipped them all over and added them, because that section there is in parallel with that one, and got an overall total resistance. And then we've used that total resistance and the EMF to calculate the current from the factory, which here you can see 0.45. So it agrees with what we had before. So I hope you find that useful. So this video follows on from the previous one I made about the IV characteristics and properties like current and potential difference in a, in a circuit. So do check those out. My next one's going to be looking at the effect of temperature on resistance 
looking a bit at resistivity and then looking at some semiconductors like LDRs, thermistors and superconductors as well. So thank you for watching.